Hi, welcome to 7 Fact, the channel where you get to watch a video about every single country on earth. In today's video we're going to talk about Bermuda, which is a British overseas territory. But keep in mind that there's a playlist containing all the British territories, so be sure to check that out too. Also, please remember to subscribe, if you wish to see the two new videos I upload every Wednesday and Saturday. Ok, first, Bermuda is not in the Caribbean. It is in fact in the North Atlantic, about 1000 km from the east coast of the United States. Second, it's not part of the US, nor is it a standalone country. It's a British overseas territory, the most populous and oldest remaining territory of the former British Empire that's still administered by the Brits. Bermuda is a self-governing country, with its own constitution and its own government which enacts local laws, while the United Kingdom retains responsibility for defense and foreign relations. And third, Bermuda is not just an island. It is in fact a cluster of 181 islands and islets. The first person to have reached the islands was Juan de Bermudez in 1505, after whom the islands are named, even though he never actually set foot there. But it took another century for someone to settle it, and even then by accident. In 1609, a flotilla of seven ships headed for the colony of Jamestown, Virginia, was broken up by a storm. The flagship was taking on water, so the captain drove it into Bermuda's reefs, after which the entire crew took to the islands in small boats. 150 passengers and the dog survived. They stayed there for 10 months and started a new settlement. In 1610 though, all but three survivors sailed on to Jamestown, leaving the islands claimed for the English crown. One of them was John Rolfe. His wife and child died and were buried in Bermuda, so he decided to leave this place for good. Later on, he was the man who married Pocahontas, the famous daughter of Powhatan, the leader of 30 Native American tribes. Before the Bermudas were settled, the islands became a replenishment spot for European ships sailing to America. During this time, legends arose of spirits and devils due to the screeching birds and wild hogs that inhabited the islands. The archipelago became known as the Isle of Devils. Later on, the people of the island became shipbuilders and privateers, or in other words, pirates. The Island of Devils was a strategic location when ships would sail between Europe and the Caribbean or America, so Bermuda became famous for not only capturing merchant ships that made the mistake of sailing into the wrong local waters, but they also plundered all the way from Boston to the Turks Island and Bahamas. Today though, these pirates are gone and the locals are known to be among the friendliest people on the planet. Now let's talk about why you're really here, the Bermuda Triangle. Also known as the Devil's Triangle, it's a loosely defined region in the western part of the North Atlantic Ocean, where a number of aircrafts and ships are said to have disappeared under mysterious circumstances. The Bermudas are the northernmost tip of the triangle. The vicinity of the Bermuda Triangle is amongst the most heavily traveled shipping lanes in the world, with cargo ships frequently crossing through it, while cruise ships and pleasure crafts regularly sail through the region, and commercial and private aircrafts routinely fly over it. Still, in popular culture, the area has been labeled as a mysterious place with paranormal or even extraterrestrial activities. But the origins of this urban legend are not that old. The earliest suggestion of unusual disappearances in the Bermuda area appeared in 1950. There are many legends surrounding this area, but keep in mind that the vast majority of them are forged, inaccurately reported or, shall I say, enhanced by many authors. Most reputable sources dismiss the idea that there's any mystery. Nevertheless, the legend lives on. 
The Bermuda Islands are not some deserted corner of the planet, but a busy place with a large local population and countless tourists. This is a bit strange, given the fact that the islands don't have a source of fresh water. That's right, there are no streams, rivers or lakes here, so there's also no public water system. So how do so many people manage to survive? By using the only source of fresh water, rainfall. They collect rainwater on roofs and catchments and store it in tanks. By law, each dwelling has to collect rainwater that is piped down from the roof to each house. The roofs have a specific shape that became iconic for Bermuda. The white stepped roofs slow rainfall and help collect the water. That's all good and well, but this begs the question, what if there's a drought? As I said earlier, 181 islands and islets make up the archipelago. Put them all together and you still barely get a surface area of 53 square kilometers. Can you guess how many people live in these few square kilometers? Almost 64,000. That's 1,275 people per square kilometer, which makes Bermuda the ninth most densely populated country on Earth. But these people have, somehow, managed to create a country that is one of the most prosperous places in the world. The UN lists Bermuda as having the fourth largest GDP per capita in the world, and at one point in 2007, they were actually number one. But don't hurry to move there though. The place is insanely expensive. For instance, the average cost of a house in Bermuda is four to five to nine hundred thousand dollars, and apartments aren't much cheaper either. The capital city of Bermuda is Hamilton. It's a city of just 1,000 people, making it one of the smallest capitals in the world. The city was built to be the capital of Bermuda in the late 18th century. Before that, St. George was the capital. This city, which is by the way larger than Hamilton, was settled in 1612 and was the first permanent settlement in the islands. It is also the third successful English settlement in the Americas after St. John's in Newfoundland and Jamestown in Virginia. But while the other two were only seasonal settlements for a number of years, St. George was continuously inhabited since its settlement. This means St. George is actually the oldest continuously inhabited English town in the Western Hemisphere. And there you have it. These were 7 facts about Bermuda. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe. Share your thoughts downstairs in the comment section and afterwards check me out on Facebook and Twitter. A good way to offer more support to this channel is through Patreon, link in the description. I hope to see you next time, bye.